Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, I want to show you guys how I built this, which is an old, old parlor style acoustic guitar, and I turned it into a rubber bridge recording guitar. If you're interested in that, go ahead and stick around. Let's dive in. All right, start off with a little bit of backstory about this guitar. This is a 1960s, made in Korea, uh, parlor style guitar. I got it for 50 bucks. Uh, it was a super interesting guitar. It's got a ton of wear on it. Um, very comfortable. The neck is, you know, it's a 12th fret body neck joint, so it's it's very kind of close and intimate feeling. It's got a comfy neck here. The frets are old and pretty worn out, but um, it's a fun, fun old guitar. And for 50 bucks, I've actually really enjoyed the project. But one of my conclusions is it really doesn't sound all that great as a as a traditional acoustic guitar. You know, you want, when you think of a traditional acoustic, you want it to be loud and resonant and, and, and sparkly and bright. And it really isn't some of those things. It's a little bit dull. It's a little bit chunky. It just doesn't really sound all that excellent. Um, so it hasn't been getting a ton of play. And I've come across the concept of a rubber bridge type guitar here recently. I came across it through Ariel Posen. Um, also, I've heard it from Madison Cunningham and, of course, like Taylor Swift. Uh, Phoebe Bridgers, that kind of thing, and it's a really kind of captivating sound. And one of the things I've been doing a little more recording recently, and it's fun to have different voices. It's fun to be able to bring out instruments that just inspire a different character out of you. So it's something I wanted to experiment with. So um, with this guitar, it, it's it took a lot of work to get to this point, but I do want to share it with you. So um, really, the game plan that we're going to follow are the following steps. Number one, uh, we need to get a rubber bridge. That's the whole namesake. But you got to cut out a piece of rubber. You got to fit it and fabricate it to to accept the strings and, and hold them at the right angle and, and depth and everything. And then, really, number two, in my opinion, a huge piece of it is the pickup. Uh, you know, it certainly acoustically on its own, it does a sound, but it's a very muted and quiet acoustic sound. And to me, the magic really is when you mix the acoustic sound in with a pickup and can add some effects, maybe run it through an amplifier, give it some compression, some tubey sponginess, uh, maybe just a tiny little bit of distortion and compression, uh, some definitely some like spring reverb or tremolo, it just really some of those tasty electric guitar type effects. And so to me, that's really the magic of this instrument. And then lastly, it's just going to need a little bit of setup work. I, I did need to install a new bone nut with the new spacing, but um, yeah, that's really all that it's going to require. It's really not that hard. Um, let's start off with how I put this bridge together. This is a piece of rubber, uh, and I got it off of a jeweler's block, which is a solid chunk of rubber. You can buy it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And uh, you start with that. You take the jeweler's block. You cut off a slice of the rubber, and you use some files or an uh, X-Acto knife to kind of make these slots so that it fits just right and then you go from there. So let's go ahead and dive into the build process and see how we got to this point.
Okay, this is what I end up with. It's relatively thin, which is just about the same depth here. See, I drew a little line here. That was the amount of the nut that was, or the saddle that was sticking up above the, the bridge. So I want this to be similar. Then I have a little bit of a taper here, which is going to match the taper uh, for intonation. Then as far as the slot depths, first of all, I want them to be a little bit tilted this way. So they're a little bit deeper in the back and then ramp up towards the front. And then the, the low strings need to have thicker slots because they're going to really want to pull in this way and you need to resist that. The, the highest string, you want it to be pretty thin because it's, if the slots are too deep, they're going to choke out the note too much. And I realize we do want some, you know, that's the whole point, the muting action. But if it's if it's too much, especially with these high ones, then they just they just don't make a note at all. So just gonna keep working on it. You want to go slow and steady because once you take off material, you can't put it back on. So we'll just continue to shape it and sand it and and cut the slots until it fits about right. But this is pretty much what you want. To me, the magic of this sound when I hear it is its recorded sound, which I'm guessing is a combination of some kind of pickup, maybe an like a transducer or under saddle type pickup. And then also maybe using like a, a close or a room make. Maybe some combination of those elements seems to be the recipe for what you're hearing on these records. So I am going to install this. Now with the pickup, because the guitar is so quiet, I actually think a higher output pickup would be a little bit preferable. Um, it also is going to keep things nice and warm, which fits that very vintagey, old school plucky thing. So this is an old like ceramic humbucker, I think from like an Epiphone guitar, maybe? I'm not really sure, but I have this cream mount and I've got this pickup and I think what I'm gonna try to do is mount it on the, just on the inner lip here. This, so this ring will just go right underneath here and I'll just drill four holes and then the humbucker will go even, you know, I, I don't need it to be super high and it'll just sit right in the sound hole. Um, then we've got a, just a, it's just a two conductor ground and hot. So I'm gonna maybe wire it to a volume control, run a bridge wire to connect in with this device here somehow, maybe on the back here in one of these screws and then run an output jack probably in this area that is the plan so let's start drilling some holes
Okay, so I just finished building this thing, like maybe an hour or two ago. And I sat down and I just started playing some stuff. Um, I've been listening to some Usher in the car today. And so I pulled out some chords from the song You Make Me Wanna. And it, you know, when you hear people on the internet make claims like magic or inspiration or instant creativity writes the song for itself, you know, it's kind of like buzzwords, but like, this was a wild and surreal experience. Like I sat down and I just like stuff just started coming out of this thing. Like these the sounds that this rubber bridge makes are just so vibey and it's just it's so it's a different creative headspace. It creates some different sounds and and it really is a neat and fun experience. In my opinion, it's it's the feel of the short scale guitar. This is an old vintage 1960s. I mean, this thing is a crappy guitar. It doesn't sound good. It's dull. It's dead. It's lifeless. Uh, if I were to use it as a traditional acoustic, it wouldn't be good. But it's got a really comfy feeling neck. The short scale is extremely intimate and comfortable to play. So it feels good to play. Uh, on top of that, the rubber bridge in combination with the pickup, I think you have to have the pickup. To me, the pickup sound with the rubber bridge is is everything. Uh, just doing it acoustically, I, I am miking up the DI, and I'll cycle through the, the mic sound, the DI sound on its own, and then the sound with the effects. But to me, the you have to have the pickup. If you just do this as an acoustic, I don't really... I mean, it's okay. It's kind of cool to sit down and noodle on, but to me, the magic really is the tone that you're getting when you record this thing. And I just have to say it, it has just, it has been so much fun to play this thing for the last like hour or two. Now, can I give you guys a long-term review? No, I cannot. You know, maybe this will be a fad. Um, you know, maybe this will be a thing that we'll look back on in 10 years and just be really cringy because it's all over the place. It's kind of this Taylor Swift thing, I, whatever. But, um, for what I have done this evening, this was totally worth it. I took this old guitar that I bought, paid 50 bucks for, and have basically turned it into a, just a, a moment in my life of creative inspiration. And so, to me, that is pretty darn cool. And so, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. We'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.